Hello everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to make an incredibly easy macaroni and cheese that's all done in one pot with three ingredients. This is just as easy as any mac and cheese out of a box you'll buy in the store, but much more delicious. All we're going to need today is pasta and I chose a rotini pasta because it has lots of nice little crenellations to hold all the cheese sauce, some evaporated milk, and cheese. I chose Wisconsin sharp cheddar cheese, and cheddar is a classic choice for macaroni and cheese, but you can use any kind of cheese that you like as long as it melts well. So let's get started. I'm bringing out a scale so that I can weigh exactly how much of each ingredient that I want. You don't have to do this. You can estimate. Macaroni and cheese is a very forgiving recipe, but I like being precise. And since it's for the video, I wanted to do it exact. And we're going to get eight ounces of our pasta and then six ounces each of our cheese and evaporated milk. It's about half the box. So honestly, when I'm just making it on my own, I just pour out what looks like half the box. And then once we have that pasta, I'm gonna go ahead and pour it into my pan over there. And now I'm going to shred the cheese. When making macaroni and cheese, it is actually very important that you shred your own cheese. The pre-shredded cheeses that you buy in the store will often have a chemical coating that prevents it from clumping together. But that same coating interferes with how the cheese melts. So your macaroni and cheese is going to be clumpy and just not as good as if you shredded the cheese on your own. So the pre-shredded cheese is good for a lot of things, but especially for macaroni and cheese, you want to shred your own. And I'm just going to go ahead and shred six ounces of this and Again, you can usually just estimate it. Uh, it should be about three quarters of this bar of cheese, but for the video, I'm going to be precise and measure it out. And there we have exactly six ounces of cheese to add to our macaroni later. And the last step is to get six ounces of evaporated milk to add in later as well. This will be about half of a can that you can buy in this store. Then you'll want to store the other half away in a sealed container so you can make more later. We are now ready to start cooking our mac and cheese. So I'm going to move over to the stove here. The first step is you want to pour water in until it just covers the pasta in your saucepan. You can see I'm just barely covering the top of the pasta. Because we're doing this all in one pot, we're actually gonna be letting the water boil away. And I'm just adding some salt in here. Whenever you're cooking pasta, you always wanna do it in salted water. This lets the salt absorb into the pasta as it's cooking. It makes it taste so much better than adding it later. I will probably be adding salt and pepper when I eat it, but you don't want to over salt it because everyone has a different salt tolerance. Now we're going to be heating this up. We want to bring it to a boil and then we're actually going to let all the water in the pot boil away until almost all the water is gone. It should take about six or seven minutes at least. And at that point, the pasta should be mostly to all the way cooked. The reason we're not cooking the pasta and then draining the water is because as the pasta cooks, it'll be releasing starches into the water that we want to mix in with the evaporated milk to make the sauce extra creamy and nice. So let's skip ahead to when it's boiling. All right, and the pasta is boiling now, so I'm going to continue stirring occasionally, but here we are just going to let it boil until the water's almost all the way gone. This is why you only wanted the water right above the level of the pasta, otherwise it would take too long to boil away. We're just going to skip ahead till the pasta's done to show you the next step. Okay, and you can see the water is pretty much entirely gone at this point. Just making sure down there. 
We're going to bring the evaporated milk over and pour it in, stir it up, and we're going to bring the milk to a boil as well. Once the milk is boiling, we're going to just add all the cheese in there. And once the cheese is in there, that's when you want to turn it to low heat or even turn the heat off entirely if you like. And we're just going to stir this pot until the cheese is completely melted and mixed in. Just keep stirring until the cheese is completely melted and you have a nice creamy sauce. Once that cheese is fully melted, your macaroni and cheese is just about done. You'll want to remove it off the heat entirely. You don't want it to burn, but it's ready to serve. If you prefer your mac and cheese to be a little less cheesy, that's understandable. I know my mom likes it that way as well. This is how I like it. You can either add more noodles or you can use less evaporated milk and shredded cheese, and then you'll have less cheesy mac and cheese. This was just as easy as any macaroni and cheese you can buy in a box at a store, but it is so much more delicious. I hope you guys all enjoy this, and I'll see you next week.